Greetings, I am Herbert Erpaderp, and Wednesday is here, and so am I. So that must mean it's time for answering questions. I have nothing interesting to speak about, so let's get right to the questions, starting with Discord as usual. Ducking Tanker said, what is your favourite animal? I always find picking favourites to be hard. There are so many awesome and adorable creatures that exist or have existed. I am rather fond of my mice, and I really want an axolotl, or a bearded dragon, but I don't think I would be able to properly look after either. Axolotls need cold water, and bearded dragons need way more space than I have available. Also, I don't have a reptile license. I do have a good friend with lizards and snakes, and I enjoy seeing those. I guess if I'm forced to pick, I'll say mice. Andrew SW said, what's your three favourite planes? And what's two plus two? As with the previous question, picking favourites is hard and they're not my favourite type of question. The one plane that immediately comes to mind is the Lockheed Lightning. I think it's an interesting looking design. I'm not a big plane guy, so I don't know a lot about them. Like with tanks, I just pick them based on how cool I think they look. To complete the list, I think Stukas look really cool, and also Sturmoviks. I like those because they're flying tanks. And we all know that 2 plus 2 is 5. There are also 5 lights. Becky from the block said, Have you ever tried painting with toothpicks? And these pictures were included. Are these completely painted using a toothpick instead of a brush? If so, A, I can't tell, and B, that seems like a really painful way to do things, especially on the larger surfaces. What I think might be the case is regular brushes were used for the base colours, and then a toothpick was used for finer details like the camo pattern. I've never really specifically set out to paint things with a toothpick, but I'm sure I've used them from time to time to apply dots of paints and things like that. I would be more inclined to just use a fine brush, but there's nothing wrong with using alternate tools. It's good to be resourceful. Either way, these are some good looking models no matter what the tools used to paint them were. But if you did paint the entire thing with toothpicks, I'm very impressed, and a little confused as to why. Either way, good work. On the Warlord Stewart video I did the other week, Colonel Hartford said, Herbert, you're a numpty. The irritating parts are on upside down, hence the build issues. I think someone else also suggested this, but they're not on upside down. The instructions did show those parts the way I installed them with the bolts on the bottom half. Also, there are pictures of the M3A1 with the bolts along the bottom. There are pictures of this model with the bolts along the top of that angled part, and maybe they built their model wrong. Some variants of the M3 have bolts all the way around the armour plate I had trouble with and the side plate, so there might be some confusion there. Either way, I'm pretty sure I got it on right, it was just a poor fit. Bohr Harms mentions that it's a shame about the gaps on the Stuart, and he's right, it is a shame. A lot of you also seem to have similar issues. Bohr Harms also says, do you, or anyone else, know of a good 28mm scale looks? I don't know of any other than the Warlord resin model, and I'm a bit reluctant to buy their resin tanks, but I would definitely be interested in knowing of a good looks in 28mm too, especially if it's available in plastic. If you know of one, please do link it in the comments. On last week's Ask Herbert Erpaderp, I asked for suggestions for games to play on stream. And Becky said, you could always try playing Armour 3 on stream. You can go from a heavily modded tactical multiplayer game with a little squad one day to a roleplay server the next. While I certainly appreciate the offer of server hosting, the thing is I don't really think that would make for very interesting streaming content. My impression of most armour mods is that it's serious business, slow paced and no fun allowed simulator times, which is definitely some people's jam, nothing wrong with that, just that it doesn't work for me. Much the same way as the realistic modes in games like War Thunder don't really work for me. In my mind it turns games from fun into tedious work. I do play a lot of PUBG, which can be slow paced even though the zone forces things to go quicker, but even then I get bored quickly and most of the time my friends and I are just running around doing stupid things and trying to do awesome jumps and find new and unusual places to put a motorbike. I've seen plenty of discussion threads with diehard armor fans complaining about that sort of behavior in their games, which is a little bit off-putting. Along with that superior attitude some of the players have towards people who just like having fun in games, rather than turning them into work. I would feel bad if I spent hours crawling through fields being required to be all disciplined only to be shot by some invisible assailant, and I would never watch somebody streaming that. Like I said, that might be some people's jam, which is fine, but it's just not for me. I think it might make for better edited content, but even then, serious military sims don't really interest me much. Potato Inc. said, maybe you could play some Company of Heroes or Day of Infamy, both World War II and awesome. 
I do have Company of Heroes 2. I've apparently played two hours of it, but I don't remember doing so. Hopefully Company of Heroes is more intuitive and enjoyable than Men of War Assault Squad was. I didn't really enjoy that game, even though it did look nice. It might be worth checking out Company of Heroes sometime soon anyway. I don't have a copy of Day of Infamy yet, but that does look like it could be fun. Next time I have a spare $20 US, I'll probably pick it up. More game suggestions are of course welcome, so put them in the comments section below. Mias Briata said, What does Herbert Erberderp work during the time he is not making YouTube videos slash streaming? The main reason I have time to put out the number of videos that I do is that I'm currently unemployed, which kind of sucks, but it is nice to have time to do things. I am looking for a job though, and when that happens, there will be less videos. Unless somehow my Patreon and YouTube ad revenue grow enough to be a livable income, that's probably what's going to happen. I do spend a lot of time making videos, and that doesn't really work with a full-time job. I also try to spend a good amount of time working on myself. Life is a bit of a struggle sometimes, as I'm sure it is for a lot of people. I recently signed up at a gym, or rather my sister took me there and kind of made me, though I wouldn't have done it if I didn't want to. I also do some voiceover work, though I haven't taken on any recently, and I will occasionally accept painting commissions, though it's not something I advertise. I don't want to be a commissioned painter. Mr. Elite Zealot said, Should I review the Flames of War Marta Tank Hunter Platoon? No one has posted a video on it, but at the same time, I feel like no one has interest in it. If that's something you want to do, go for it. I'm sure there is some interest in it. I mean, you're interested in it, or you probably wouldn't be considering it. Someone else might be really interested too, or maybe on the fence and your video could be helpful to that person, which is good, even if the video isn't wildly popular. It's also kind of nice to be the first or only person to make a video on something. If someone's looking for that particular subject, they'll probably find your video rather than a whole bunch of others on the same subject. And from there, they might go on to look at the rest of your videos or maybe they'll subscribe, which are both obviously good things. I think you should make the videos that you want to see. It is good to consider what others want too, but I don't think that should be the priority. Personally, I find it much more enjoyable and satisfying to make videos that I want to see, and I feel like it's less likely to lead to burnout. Harry Davies said, Have you seen the new late war starter sets for the UK, USSR, USA, and Germany? I'm assuming you're talking about Flames of War. In which case, I don't think I have. Unless you mean the slightly older box sets, like Stalin's Bears or Patton's Eagles, which I don't seem to be able to find anymore. I haven't seen any new ones, and I couldn't find any on Google or the Flames of War page. It's probably there, I'm just not seeing it. I'm definitely interested though. And finally, Fog of War said, Thanks for the tip about bolt action tank wars. I snaffled that, and the Free Australian Forces expansion as well. I shared this on Fog of War. I hope you don't mind. I like the word snaffled. Also, I don't mind at all. Sharing information is excellent. And the idea with my sharing it was to try and help the community. Maybe somebody might pick up that book just because it's free and find something that they really love. I'm all for people sharing the things I've shared and the things I've made, especially if it's going to be helpful to someone. As long as you don't try passing off my work as your own, sharing is awesome. And with that, this week's Ask a Herpet Herpet Herp shall come to a halt. As always, if you have any questions you would like me to answer, leave them in the appropriate location, which is the comments section, Discord, Patreon, or social media, or wherever I'm going to see it. There's plenty of choices, though skywriting probably won't work. If you want to, you can subscribe to me here on YouTube, follow me on social media, or watch me stream on Twitch. I recommend them all, and I'm completely impartial. Okay, maybe not. If you really like the things I do, please consider helping to support my content over at patreon.com slash That would be very good. Check the links in the description for further information. I shall return soon, so until then, happy whatever it is you're doing, and thanks for watching. Farewell.